So, we have lit the way with yellow shinies, got very lazy with orange ones, teleported every which way to Sunday with the power of purple, and have deconstructed the world and probably reconstructed it again one green gem at a time. But now, now it's time to turn up the heat, everyone. Red gems are next in line, and are all about fire, lightning even, and reviving? More on that in a bit. For now, you already know the drill, I'm sure. But red gems like the others before it have many, many sources. So let's list them, yes. Tumbleweeds here offer us a whopping 0.02% chance at getting one. And while that is hilariously bad, it is likely the safest option and could lead to lots of other goodies along the way. So there's that, I suppose. But surprisingly, Graves make their very first appearance in our gem series here and give us a 15.35% chance for a red gem per digging. Not bad at all. However, Graves are completely non-renewable. So you will be really rolling the dice with these things. Good luck. But Red Hounds are next and they will up our chances to 20% per kill. However, we might have to do a little waiting for said chances to start popping up in game. For you see, Red Hounds don't typically start arriving in Hound Waves until summer and our second autumns even. That said, they will be pretty common occurrences moving forward from then, so there's that. In a similar vein though, hound mounds found naturally in the dragonfly desert or within set pieces can also have higher chances to spawn red hounds during summer. And since hounds constantly respawn within these things, these could be a nice farming spot potentially. And lastly, and yet another similar vein, Vargs can call forth special hounds too, but you will need more than one to really make things as efficient enough to matter I feel, but still, options galore with red hounds, and thus, red gems. But our girl Dragonfly is next, and she's important for two reasons actually. She not only drops two red gems absolutely guaranteed every single time no matter what, but also the blueprint for the Scaled Furnace, a very special red gem craft that we'll be talking about later. So murder her dead so, douse her flames, and be sure to snatch it all up for yourself. Ah, but here's an interesting one, folks. Clauses Gem Deer. Also making their first appearance in a gem guide, they offer us both red and blue gems for free, essentially. Well, just as long as you win the fight against Evil Santa here, that is. And that's key. You should probably wait till the fight is finished to potentially kill these things, or just wait for them to drop their gems naturally, as you can see. If you do happen to go about it another way, let's just say, you better be prepared. Hot springs on the lunar island can also lead to red gems, but not just any hot springs, mind you. Glass hot springs here. And if you see these, this means you would have had to already bomb them with bath bombs made under the Celestial Crafting Tab in order for a full moon night to glass them for ya. Now each one, mind, will have a 20% chance to drop a red gem. And if we couple this with our newest ability to force infinite full moons, we could really have something special here when it comes to gem farming. So make note. Now, earthquakes on the other hand are not anything too special. However, they do offer a 1.6% chance of having at least one of the 5 to 6 objects that fall during it every second being a red gem. However, the chances of said gem actually staying intact when it does hit the ground is another thing entirely. But hey, it's a source I guess. Stalagmites are too. Well, at least the fully generated ones that is. Yes, everyone, be them tall or normal stalagmites here, they must be full. Otherwise, we're just going to be wasting our time if we do want gems from these things. Now, each type offers the same 0.05% chance at a red gem. So good luck, especially as stalagmites are not entirely renewable. Abundant, yes, but not renewable. These are, however... In fact, from here on out, expect every source to be renewable via one thing, an ancient fuel weaver kill. But broken clockworks here, within the ruins mind you, offer us a respectable 25% chance at red gems with each smashing, and that's going to be some of our best chances around. 
so make notes. Ancient statues are next, and the ends of their staffs or bases of their heads will actually fully indicate to us what type of gem they will drop when mined, so it is very straightforward there. Unless, of course, the ruins don't actually generate with any red gems socketed within them. Ornate chests in either the labyrinth or atrium have a 15% chance to spawn with one or two red gems within them. So if you're willing to take the risk of these chests being trapped, then I say flip them open when you get the opportunity. Red gems have some of the better chances out of these things than any of the other gems we talked about lately. Or you could just simply wait to see what the large ornate chest will bring following an ancient guardian kill. Now we've got a whopping 66% chance at getting 3 to 5 red gems per box, so that's a thing. Unless score course you me, and you get nothing. But last, and most likely least, broken ancient pseudoscience stations can actually drop red gems 0.56% of the time when we hammer them. However, we're going to be rolling way more danger than reward with these things, so I really wouldn't count on them. That said, we can count on red gems that lead us to more power. Perhaps even an early shadow manipulator even, with its purple gem refinement craft here. Good stuff. Red gems also go into fire staffs, and while magic can be in need of some reworking I feel, the fiery stick does offer some uses at the end of the day. It can help panic certain mobs to buy you time. It can be used to start campfires and such. Can light objects ablaze like a torch could. And deals fire damage to enemies. All at the cost of 5 sanity cast with 20 uses total, mind you. Now, you have to remember that fire damage doesn't stack. So you will have to wait for enemies to go out to blast them again to be the most efficient about it. But have fun, I guess. But if you do happen to roast yourself alive, then be glad that red gems can actually bring you back again. Life-giving amulets have one other use though, so make notes. For you see, when worn, it will convert 5 hunger into 5 health every 30 seconds until you are fully healed or the amulet breaks. It's neat stuff. But yes, using amulets to revive will not only save our maximum health from falling, but will also put nearby mobs to sleep so we can skedaddle the heck out of there. Keep on keeping on, friends, all with red gems. But it's the crazy lady's turn, and with her, the end is nigh book, made from a single red gem and some paper, mind you. She can call down 16 separate bolts of lightning that will set things ablaze, set enemies on fire, and even charge WX78 players around ya. With 5 uses total per book, it's pretty freaking amazing. Just be mindful of the 33 sanity it drains per read, however. But hey, remember that scaled furnace blueprint I told you to pick up like 18 million years ago? Just use some red gems to finally craft one for yourself for infinite lights, constant heat, and a place to cook from, everyone. Yup, enough said. So nighty night, right? Video over? Well, not quite yet, but at least we'll be ready for it. Now night lights here are mostly decorative at the end of the day, as they throw off zero heat whatsoever, and cause nightmare fuel to refuel, which is pretty unique. But they can be pretty cool for repelling guest alts nowadays, so that's a thing. Oh, and I suppose Willow players will benefit from a decent sanity regeneration effect while near these things too, so make notes. But yes, let us wrap up with the usuals, folks. Moon lenses, gemerators, and a big bad crab. And red moon lenses go into absolutely nothing else in this game, so they are just glorified map markers at the end of the day. Winona's gemerators, though, have made themselves well known in pretty much every gems video thus far. However, this will be the first time that I say that using red gems on them is actually advised. So there you go. And finally, why not make everyone's most favorite boss even better by potentially leveling up his already annoying health to 95,000 in total with red gems, everyone? Yup, sounds like a bloody great idea there. But there you have it, everyone. Red gems and their unique sources and uses within Don't Starve Together here. They will certainly help bring the heat, and then some, all the while being one of the easiest gems to come by throughout the game, I feel. But only two gems remain, folks, and I'll be waiting. 
But thanks for watching. Well wishes to all. Red means hot. And I'll see ya in the next one. Bye-bye.